Hello, my name is David Meany, VP of Technical Sales and Marketing at ECS Inc. International. In this multi-part series, we will look at oscillator design basics. We will cover all the steps required to design and build a functioning oscillator. In the sixth episode, we will discuss oscillator transconductance, fundamental versus overtone resonance mode, and design considerations. First, we will discuss oscillator transconductance. Another way to consider if an oscillator will start consistently is to consider the transconductance. To ensure oscillation starts and reaches a stable phase, the oscillator must provide enough gain to compensate for the oscillation loop losses and to provide the energy for the oscillation buildup. As discussed in the startup section, the ratio between oscillator gain and oscillator loop critical gain cannot exceed one, as this would include a too long oscillator startup time or even stop startup altogether. Designers should try and meet a gain margin of greater than five. These parameters are determined by the gain margin formula. GM or gain margin is the oscillator transconductance specified in the data sheet of your IC you are using. For megahertz oscillators, the transconductance is in the range of 12 milliamps per volt. For kilohertz oscillators, transconductance will be measured in microamps per volt, depending on the product. GM crit is defined as the minimal transconductance of an oscillator required to maintain stable oscillation. Assuming the design is equal CL1 and CL2 values, and the crystal load is the same as the crystal CL, the GM crit is expressed as shown. When considering oscillation startup, the choice of crystal parameters is important. Lowering the SR frequency, C0 and CL will reduce GM crit and will maximize the gain margin. Next, we will look at fundamental versus overtone resonance mode. The crystal frequency of a quartz crystal unit is limited by the physical dimensions of the vibrating quartz element. In some cases, the limiting dimensions are the length and width the most popular crystal unit is the AT cut. The limiting dimension is the thickness of the vibrating quartz element. As the thickness is reduced, the frequency goes up. At some point, usually around 50 megahertz, the thickness of the quartz plate becomes too fragile for use in the field. If you need to develop an oscillator at higher frequencies that will still be robust enough to operate in the field, we can look at using one of the other resonant frequencies. These are lower magnitude frequencies that are generated as harmonics. These harmonics will all be at odd integers of the fundamental frequency. Therefore, a crystal unit has a fundamental frequency of 10 megahertz. It can also be made to oscillate at three, five, and seven times the fundamental frequency. So then, the 10 megahertz crystal designed to oscillate at 30, 50, and 70 megahertz. These multiples of the fundamental frequency are called overtones and are identified by the integer of multiplication. When an overtone frequency is required, the crystal unit must be specified to operate at the desired frequency and on the desired overtone. Crystals designed to operate in fundamental mode should never be used at their overtone frequencies. This is because the crystal's manufacturing process is different for fundamental and overtone crystals. If you want to use a crystal in overtone mode, you need to suppress the fundamental frequency to ensure operation at the desired overtone frequency and not at the more powerful fundamental frequency. To do this, it is necessary to modify the oscillator circuit. One method is to add a tank circuit consisting of an inductor and a capacitor. These modifications are shown for the series and parallel resonance circuits. In both cases, the tank circuit is tuned to resonate at some frequency between the fundamental and desired frequency. This isolates the fundamental frequency and shunts it to ground, leaving only the desired overtone frequency at the output of the oscillator. When designing an oscillator circuit or laying out your board for an oscillator, certain design considerations should be followed. It is always recommended to avoid parallel traces to reduce stray capacitance. All traces should be kept as short as possible, and components should be isolated to prevent coupling. Ground planes should be used to isolate signals. 
There are many other terms that you will need to familiarize yourself with during your design efforts. ECS Inc. has a broad line of frequency control and magnetics products to choose from. The ECS Inc. website, ecsxtal.com, has additional resources with technical guides, videos, and reference designs for your viewing. Thank you for watching.